always done for me, have always been around for me, even when I was bad. You show me right from my wrong. Yes, you did. And you took up for me when everyone was down in me. You just didn't understand. This is a very difficult time for me, especially giving up on my dear, sophisticated friend. Pat was someone who stood at the door when I came to St. Joseph to work in 1980, and she welcomed me and my family because when we went to our church parish, my parents came in town to visit to make sure that my husband and I belonged to a church. And when my dad reached his hand out to shake the priest's hand, he skipped over my dad and went to the next hand. And my dad turned and looked at me and said, you can't stay at this church. So we left the church, my husband and I, and we came here at St. Joseph and who we met at the door. My friend, my prayer buddy, my confidant, Miss Sophisticated Pat. She taught me everything that I needed to know above and beyond, along with what I knew from my mother, her mother. We ran in church late. If she came up the aisle running late, her mom sat in the middle row. If her mom had to push over and gave her the eyes, well, we spoke Creole French, we knew I would look at her and she would give me a pair of eyes and I would tell her, la l'etaye toi, that means she was going to get a whipping. <laughs> so she knew she was going to get a whipping, but we had one thing in common, myself, Miss Jean, Miss Pat, every Tuesday night we came to Novena and we prayed and we belonged to the Blessed Mother and she formed that in us. Well, there were many, many times that we shared on Sunday mornings at, after church. My husband had to pull me away. He would say, call a Pat. 
And then on Monday it would continue because we always had something that we believed in that she taught us, leave it at the altar. Well, we saw a lot of things at the altar. Our funniest moment one time in church was when some, uh, some lady came to the altar and her whole skirt fell off. And I, how nobody saw it, but she saw it and I saw it. And I guess our eyes helped the lady pick her skirt up. <laughs> I don't know, but it happened right here in church. We had wonderful moments, Pat and I. It's difficult to say goodbye, but God made me understand that I'm not saying goodbye. I'm saying I'm opening up a door again. Another time that I would tease her that she would get a whipping again from her mom was for Father's Day. Oh, well, she was the only mother that would stand up. And I would look to the side. I gave her the eyes to the side, and I would tell her, Lolly, toi, toi, they're going to whip you today. She knew that whipping was from the time she sat in church until she went to the altar. She left it at the altar. When she got home on Mondays, she would call me, and she would tell me, she's still tying me, and I said, babe, take your whipping, take your whipping. Well, to close everything, I did everything that she asked me for over two years. When God woke me up at 3 o'clock in the morning and said, get up and pray, I did. Down to her final days, I didn't understand. She always asked me to have time, peace, patience with her girls. She loved her family and never give up on the blessed mother. For closing, it was so difficult. I knew the time was coming as I journeyed with her in the spirit. It was so hard. Because in times of my life, she came to my door and took over my house. When I needed her, she was there. So the only thing that I can do for her is leave my door open for her family and give them what she gave me. For closing, I didn't understand why God said, go and wash her feet. And bring, I heard her voice telling me, bring me a scapula. And when I got to the house, Kena looked at me and asked me to the end, how you know she didn't have a scapula? I said, I've been journeying with her for over two years. She told me. For closing, when it came time, I told her, I said, you're going to know. She's going to tell us. I did exactly what God asked me to do. I took the holy water and I washed her. I washed her feet. Dita said, Brenda, nobody could touch her feet. I said, she ain't going to move today. She's going to let me wash her feet. I had to ask, what does washing her feet mean? I know we wash feet on Holy Thursday. But I did it because I loved her. For closing, she let me know that she was going home. We were at a party, and she turned around, about to hit that door. I could not write this. I can only speak from my heart, from my gut. And when I told, I said, where are you going? She was running toward the door. And she turned around and she looked at me and said, I'm going through that door. And who was at the door? She wasn't getting a whipping this time. It was her mom waiting on her. Amen. morning. Memory of a friend. We know that we are three parts person, body, soul, and spirit. A lot of people call her Pat. 
Some people call her Patricia. I call her Tot. That was the name that we had called her from youngsters. She was a person, a comical person. She had a comical side of her. She had a personal side of her, a professional side, but she also had a spiritual side. She would make you laugh on just about anything, even make fun of herself sometimes. She was a professional person. Everything just had to be so. If she was doing something as doing a bridal party, everything had to be in such a way. It had to be perfect. But I want to talk about her spiritual side today. She and I would share visions, dreams. And when I say vision and dreams, I'm not speaking about what you're going to do in the future. I'm speaking about vision and dreams that God gives you. Pat was a person that loved the Lord. And if you had heard her speak about her spiritual journey, she would speak with such emphasis. She would say, I love the Lord with all my soul, body, and spirit. And she was right. You have to have a spiritual relationship with Christ. If you want to grow, just as you have a relationship with a friend, a husband, you have to spend some time with that person to get to know them. There were times when her spiritual life had not grown. She would go through a lot of things in life. And she would call me, she said, Ni, nee, I don't understand it. And I said, she said, I don't understand how the wicked always prospering. But if you ever got to the point where you have question about how the wicked prosper, I recommend you to Psalm 73. You would get comfort in that. Pat and I would talk. She would call me sometimes. We would stay on the phone for hours. Not talking about anybody, but talking about the Lord. Talking about her walk with the Lord, how she had grown. The things that bothered her before had come to the point where she would not let it bother her anymore. When we grow in the Lord, we learn how to combat anything life throws at us. Her children know. She was a mother that loved her children. Her children and her grandchildren was her world. When she talked about them, it's like she was talking about God himself. So you knew her walk with God, she loved her children, she loved God, she loved her family, she loved her friend. Sometimes people might ask, how did we become so close? Well, I've been close with this family for a long time. Peggy was my best friend growing up, but as life went on, Todd and I began to get close. I don't know if it was because of the spiritual walk we had with the Lord, or it was because our children grew up together. But we was always there uplifting one another. The lady spoke about the scalpler. She talked about that all the time. I said, Pat, we grow in the Lord there were times when she didn't understand some things about scripture. She would call me up and I would share with her. There were times, there were other times she would call. If I didn't have the answer, I said, we're going to walk through the word together. And if I couldn't find it then, I'd say, I'll research it and I'll get back with you. But she was a person that loved the Lord with all of her heart, like she said, soul and body. Pat is going to be with the Lord. She's already there with him. Her body is going to meet up with her one day when the Lord cracked the sky. And he's going to raise up the dead first. And those who are left here will be caught up. But we're going to meet the Lord in the air. But she's already met him. But I can say one thing. She can't crown our Lord till we get home. God bless you all. 
And God bless and keep these children. Amen. Good morning. I just want to talk to you all about a very special woman. Some of you know her as Patricia, Miss Pat, Patty, Tatine, Love, Mama. I'm shaking. And lastly, her neighborhood name, Wonder Woman. But I called her T. And I was her Roy. Don't repeat that. Did you know she named me Shira Rochelle? I was her special and favorite niece. Sorry. <laughs> June Boy, Paul and Skeeter, and Meg. I'm so sorry. Y'all know the truth. <laughs> she loved me, and I loved her. She would kiss my cheeks so hard and bite them until they were red. She told me that my cheeks were just for her. When T found out that my mama, Peggy, was pregnant, she began shopping at all of the high-end boutiques. She purchased one of the most expensive infant gowns in the store. I wore that gown the day I left the hospital 41 years ago. That very same gown was passed down from me, Megan, Trey, Malia, CJ, Caden, and even my daughter, Brooklyn. Growing up, I've always wanted to be like T. She was classy and always in the latest fashion, hair, makeup, and makeup trends. You see, before all of the YouTube tutorials, there was T. I've learned all of the beauty secrets and tips from her. Growing up, the neighborhood kids would call her Wonder Woman because she was so beautiful and fine. I remember when I was going to St. Joe's to work in the third grade, my T used to have this long black ponytail that I wanted to wear so bad, so one day I took it. <laughs> Without her permission and wore it to school, I told all of my friends that my hair grew so long overnight from eating carrots, drinking milk, and sugar. That very night, T called my mom and said, Roy, to tell, say, Roy, I know you took my ponytail. I wonder how she knew. It must have been her superpowers. T and my mama would talk Creole on the phone all night just to say things that I wouldn't understand what they were discussing. They were best friends. This is just a little lanyard. Did you know that my T designed wedding hats and dresses and jewelry? She had her own company called Hats by Pat. She designed many wedding gowns, hats, and several for several local brides. I remember she even had her own TV segment promoting her business, which featured yours truly and a few of my cousins. Did you know that my T was the first woman to stand up in church to represent single mothers on Father's Day? You see, my T was strong, God-fearing, and worked hard with several jobs to raise my three beautiful cousins, Dielda, Kina, and Lawana, who have become strong black women, just like my T. When my T became ill, when my T became ill, I remember my cousin Lawana telling me that T was sick. I told her that the timing just isn't right. She'll be okay. T is strong. What I meant by timing, I just couldn't imagine my daughter not knowing the T that I knew, the T that I wanted to be like. So I prayed and prayed and asked God for answers. And now I finally understand the only person strong enough to live with an illness like this for so long is the mighty, mighty Wonder Woman. 
I love you, T, until we meet again. Well done, God's good and faithful servant. At this time, we will have a final viewing. We'll ask that our ushers come forth, please, and we will have our bereaved family to come up afterwards, okay? Thank you.
that he called me by my name and said, servant, well done, well done. Well done. That's all I want to hear him say. Well done. Well done.
please stand.
us. We thank God for what he's done. We know that our hearts are burdens. Our hearts are saddened that we wish he would have stayed just a little while longer. But God has his way, and we're trying to embrace his way. We need his help. Raise your hand if you need his help. We need his help today. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit is all over this place. Amen. Amen. And it's truly in the waters of baptism that our dear sister, she died with Christ. And she also rose with him to new life. May she now share with him eternal glory. Let the church say amen. amen. And now we place this poem as a reminder that Patricia was baptized in Christ Jesus. And she put on a garment of grace. She put on Jesus and she never took him off. And now we place this poem to remind us that she now has not only a new robe of glory, but now is reminded that she was a soldier of the Lord. And now, as we think about baptism, family, I ask you to put your hands on this crucifix. There are many who have said, well, why is it that Christian folk have a crucifix and not a cross? In other words, why is the body still on? The reason why the body is still on this cross to remind us that he gave everything to make sure we get to heaven. Didn't Patricia do everything? I don't hear enough of y'all in here. She gave her life for others to have fun. May the church say it again. Family. Go ahead, sing this song. In the water. In the water. God's going to trouble. Let us bow our heads to pray, Almighty God and Father. As we open this holy mass, this funeral homegoing mass for our sister Patricia, it is our certain faith that your son who died on the cross was raised from the dead, the first fruits of all who have fallen asleep. Grant that through this mystery that your servant Patricia, who has gone to her rest in Christ, may share in the joy of his resurrection. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever, and let God's people say, Amen. You may be seated. Thank you. Awesome. And now for our reading, yes. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, <laughs> behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all fall asleep, but we will all be changed in an instant, in the blink of an eye at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound, the dead will be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For that which is corruptible must clothe itself with incorruptibility. And that which is mortal must clothe itself with immortality. And when this which is corruptible clothes itself with incorruptibility, and this which is mortal clothes itself with immortality, then the word that is written shall come about. Death is swallowed up in victory. Where, O oh death, is your victory? Where, O oh death, is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who gives us victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. 
the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. sing this song come on somebody with all your heart the Lord is my light come on and you know he's your salvation and my
Praise the Lord, God. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. The souls of the just are in the hand of God, and no torment shall touch them. They seemed in view of the foolish to be dead, and their passing away was thought as affliction, and their going forth from us, utter destruction. But they are in peace, for if before men indeed they be punished, yet it's their hope full of immortality, chastised a little. They shall be greatly blessed, because God tried them and found them worthy of himself. As gold in the furnace, he proved them, and sacrificial offerings, he took them to himself. In the time of their visitation, they shall shine and shall dart about us, dart about as sparks through stubble. They shall judge nations and rule over peoples. And the Lord shall be their king forever. Those who trust in him shall understand truth and be the faithful shall abide with him in love. Because grace and mercy are with his holy ones and his care with his elect. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us stand. Hallelujah to the Lord. Hallelujah. Salvation. from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, do not let your hearts be troubled. You have faith in God, have faith also in me. In my Father's house, yes. there are many dwelling places. Yes, if there were not, would I have told you that I'm going to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back again and take you to myself, so that where I am, you also may be. Uh -huh. Where I am going, you know the way. Thomas said to him, Master, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Yeah. Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, 
and of the Holy Spirit. As you read in the obituary, Patricia had this thing for honoring the Blessed Mother. And she believed in it, and we, her and I, talked about it on a number of occasions. So let us say together, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for our sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. It also says in the obituary that on the fifth day of December, in, on, in 1946, this woman came to us out of the God-soaked country called Vachery, Louisiana. And anybody here know that anything that is good has got to come out of Vachery, Louisiana. The cooking there will make your mouth melt three times in a row. Everybody who's from there is as nice as pie. And Vassery is a place where if a man is looking for a beautiful woman to marry, he just needs to head on down to Vassery, Louisiana. I didn't even know how to spell Vassery before I came to Marrero, but I was quickly introduced to the Vassery way. I even tried to claim Vashri as a home one time, and they told me, no, Father, you're not from the soil of Vashri, Louisiana, but we love you anyway. I know that the looking to what it meant for Patricia to go home, Deacon and I were there with her just days before, but I like to think about when the Lord came. And I'm sure that as he got closer and closer to her in a, in a vision full of light, who here thinks it was full of light? Amen. And I can imagine him coming to her and smiling with that Jesus smile and said, I told you. And I bet you, Patricia's like, Lord, what are you talking about? I told you. I said it in the gospel that I had written down. Come on, somebody, you don't act like you know what I'm talking about. He said, I told you I went and got a place ready for you. And I told you that I ain't leaving you down here for a very, very, very long time. Somebody here know the time down here ain't but so long. He said, but I'm going to come back and take you to myself. Because I am the way. And church, you don't know this, but Patricia didn't just hear that, but she lived going the way of Jesus Christ. Because we all know just because there is a way don't mean that we go the way. I don't hear enough church folk in here. Just because God says that's the right way to go doesn't mean that's the way everybody automatically goes. You got to choose to go the way. There's a whole bunch of ways, but there's only one way to get back to God. Jesus said, I ain't a, a possibility. I am the only way you got. Who here knows there ain't nobody else like Jesus? Ain't somebody praise him in here. That ain't nobody else like him. And when you think about Patricia and what she did, and, and you know, that, that song that we sang reminds me a lot of Patricia, that responsorial song. When that part says, whom shall I fear? I, when I look in the eyes of Patricia Jackson, that woman didn't know nothing about fear of nobody. You're not hearing what I'm saying to you. She let me know without question there ain't nothing that she ain't worrying about because she got God as her rear. Somebody hear what I'm telling you. She got God on the side. She got God leading her. So she ain't worrying about anybody and anything. Amen. Now sometimes she, she you know, she lets you know her way. You know. She didn't believe in not telling you what she thought. She definitely let me know 
of some things that I needed to know. Who here knows a priest needs the notes? Amen. Amen. You can't walk and act like, well, I'm a pre whatever. You got to learn from the people of God. Amen, somebody. And Miss Jackson definitely, and not only in those conversations, but uh, the elder and I had a great, we had a, we had a good time. You know, it's something when you're talking to a child of a woman so great, and she can talk about her mother in such a way, you can tell she got it. All her daughters got it, right? You can, they, they understood what their mother did. They, they, they understood what she's trying to say. Amen. And, and, and we were having a good time. She said, I didn't realize what Lawana's subway shop that her mother was a manager. But sometimes she was telling the boss <laughs> you tell the boss how to run her stuff. Anybody here ever know what I'm talking about? You, you, look, your mama is always your It don't matter how old you are. Somebody shake your head up in here. It don't matter how old you are. Your mama is your mama. So she could be the one under you, but she actually is the one. Thank you. Amen. Amen. So Lawana smiling. I know she's like, Lord. She walk in the subway, and her mama like, you know what? She was firing people. She was like, excuse me. Excuse me. Hello. I'm the. Hello. And Deacon and the elder can both tell you, because. I heard this story very quickly about the St. Joseph altar committee that her mama and Deacon were on the committee. Deacon by default of his position, amen. Well, uh, they were talking and one day the, the, the one who leads it is her daughter, the elder. And of course, uh, they were cutting up. Anybody here know what I mean when I say? They was cutting up, you know, they was being distractive and doing a lot of other things. So her daughter, of course, said, excuse me, excuse me, ma'am. We don't do that. We don't, whatever you talk, we ain't going that route. So her mother, of course, gave her a lot of lip back. <laughs> what you mean? So the elder kicked Deacon and the mother off in one swing. <laughs> both both of y'all. You are now off the committee. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> did she still give her two cents? Yes, she did. So I will forever think of when I hear that responsorial song. Whom shall I feed? I'm going to sing Patricia. <laughs> Had no fear. Amen. The fearlessness was needed. She had to raise those girls practically by herself. She had to have no fear. Her father, amen, somebody, had to be a part of the fearlessness that needed to be stand up to win some folks had got it wrong, even in the church. Why y'all acting quiet up in here? The church folks will get it wrong just as much as the folks who are outside of church. In case you didn't know, you don't know what I'm referring to, but there was a time here in this church, 1959, somebody know what I'm talking about. And that fateful day, the day that this church will never forget, because it was a day when people stood up and had courage and there were those who say, you ain't sitting in this spot right here because of the color of your skin. But her family got up one day and said, you know what? I don't need to be in the back of the church. I can sit anywhere I feel like sitting. And when they did, who here knows you always going to have to suffer for the right thing. And we all know that day when, when that, her family did that, that, that there were those waiting for them outside of the church. And it was a black mark. It was an ugly day. There were black folks being beat up, parishioners, Catholic folks being beat up by other Catholic folks. You know, we still got that going on today. We still got today people supposed to be on the same team. Y'all don't need, y'all not talking to me on the same team and we fighting, right? 
And, and unfortunately, it was a, a moment not only of racism, which we know we still dealing with, amen, somebody, but there were some folks, both black and white, that said, we ain't going to have that up in here, and St. Joseph the Worker is still here to this very day. And so that, so, but it took her to be, that she had to learn early, you got to be without fear. You can't let folks scare you from what belongs to you. And so you, you got to have a sense about you, like, it, you ain't worrying about folks putting you down. I love Jesus' words. Don't worry about who can kill your body. Don't, don't worry about those who threaten you that way. What you ought to be worried about is the one who can throw you into hell. And who is that but the one in the mirror? Somebody know what I'm talking about. The one that could throw you into hell is you because if you tripping and don't do your right thing, you will find yourself away from God. So don't worry about if they beat you up on the steps of the church. Let them know it's going to be all right. And that's what she did. And as she went on, and she did so many things. She was, uh, uh, she was with the accounting. She, was with, she did the ministries here. She was a mama. She was raising her children. She was such a part of the community. She was a wonder woman of Morero. Amen. She did it. She had such class. I never seen a woman sitting in a deathbed so. I said, that woman got some class right there. She, you know, and, and then I realized that you know somebody by the fruit that they bore. Yeah, I didn't really get a chance to talk a whole lot to Miss Jackson, but I saw her fruit. I realized that these women are not who they are unless somebody must have shown them or impacted them. Anybody here know what I'm talking about? Who here comes from good stock? Come on, somebody. It, that's because you were surrounded by people that taught you and showed you, and that's who you are today. So I'm looking, and I remember telling her, I said, you know what, Miss Jackson? She said, yes, Father. I said, your tree has bore a lot of great fruit. It takes time. Who here knows it takes time to grow? You know, because these three girls, they are so angelic to me, but Miss Patricia said they weren't always that way. <laughs> She said, some of them was a little bit, you know. <laughs> I'm not going to get into that because I love them all dearly, so I'm not going to display it. But her and I laugh sometimes. I'm like, oh, I said, wait, Makina did that? <laughs> not know that. But all of that work, brothers and sisters, is not about for just her life. Yeah. Are you with me so yeah. far? God didn't put life in you just for you to live it. You're not hearing what I'm saying. Your life is lived so that you can be a part of impacting other people's lives. She didn't live just for Patricia to live her life. She lived with a sacrificial spirit so that other people can live because of her. See, that's what the old school do. Amen, somebody. Because, you know, new school, you know, new jack. Anybody here know the term new jack? See, if you know new jack, we know you old. Because that wasn't a term until Wesley Snipes. Was it? You know, never mind. I, I got to go back to the podium because y'all be acting all cute like you don't know who Wesley Snipes and New Jack City was. Lord, Lord have mercy. That, back in the day, Lord have mercy. And, and, and when you think about the new jack way, everybody want to get a hand out. Somebody know what I'm talking about. Young people got to understand, it ain't about giving a hand out to you. You got to know that you're standing on the shoulders of people. And thereby, you got to work for your stuff. You got to know that. So we look at that and we go, well, Lord, well, what is this about? What is this about for today? Raise your hand if you know what today is about. Okay, three of y'all, raise your hand. Okay, that's not good. Tell your neighbor, say, neighbor. I'm not here just for me to look cute. You, you're not here because you weren't about looking cute at Patricia's funeral. You here, now say neighbor, I'm here 
because I don't got much time. You don't know how much time you got. And the Lord one day is going to let you know when the dash is complete. So if you want to see Patricia again, I don't know about y'all, but I'm going to see her again. I'm going to be with her one day. That in order for that to happen, you still got some time. Now anybody here know you need some more time. I'm only talking to the sinners up in here. I'm, all, I'm only talking to the people that know that you've been tripping sometimes. You, you look cute with your dress, but there's a whole lot up in that closet. <laughs> so you and I know that we've got to do the work that God has put on your plate. Amen, somebody. The usuals are very recognizable. Let's see your response. I love seeing this. Some of y'all got work called being a wife. Mm -hmm. yeah, see, they don't say much when I call them out. Some of y'all got the, the plate of being a husband. Uh -huh. so, some of you got a plate called being a mama. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Some of y'all got to be a grandmama. Some of y'all just got to stay sane on your job. You got to make sure you don't kill your boss. Amen, somebody. You, sometimes you just, you, the plate just includes you being a, a child a, of a mother that just gets on your last nerve. Mm -hmm. But God doesn't want you just to deal with the usual. He's got stuff for you to do and you can't wait to say yes. I don't hear enough of y'all. You can't wait to say yes, Lord. Because Patricia said yes, I ought to say yes. I'll give you two verbs. Are you ready for the two verbs? Praise and push. When you're in a good mood, praise him. When you're feeling good, praise him. When he gave you a promotion, praise the Lord God. When he put food on your table, thank you, praise your Lord. When, when you got stuff, when doors are opening all around you, just praise the Lord God. But when you have a bad day, praise Him anyway. When you thought it ain't working out, praise Him anyway. When people are stabbing you in the back, praise Him anyway. When they're not looking at you straight, they give you that little stink eye like, what's up with you? I'm praising my Lord anyway. Because you got to praise your way through the good times and praise them in the bad times. It's easy to praise them when everything's good. Oh, but when things are not so good. Praise him anyway. Patricia Deacon is my witness. Right there, she had the washcloth on her forehead. She was praising God anyway. She had pain all up in her body. She didn't know what was going to happen, but she's praising God anyway. Because the Lord ain't going to have you be not as accessible to crosses, trials, people tripping, things are wrong. That's when you say, I praise him when I'm on the mountain. I praise him when I'm in the valley. I praise him because he's worthy of the praise. I praise him in my kitchen. Somebody hear what I, I praise him in my bathroom. I, I praise him when I'm in my car. I'm praising him while I'm at the job looking at my boss like, you are trick, but I praise the Lord God anyway. I praise them when there's COVID, oh Lord. And I praise them when there's not COVID. I praise him because he is so good unto me. I can't keep the praise to myself. Tell your neighbor, say, I got to let the praise out. Now, now, now listen, you may be like, well, Father, how long is that going to take? I mean, can you just hurry it up, please? I can't wait to get to heaven where there's no clock on the wall. Where the sun never sets. Where church is not determined whether you got to go to the Saints game after. I'm so glad there's a place where the angels are in the choir all day and all night long. So I know you may be like, Father, what's gotten up into you? 
When a good woman like Patricia Dumas Jackson touches my life, I just can't help but to say, Father, that's you right there. And I just want to say thank you and I want to praise you because there's going to be some days that will be dark and it will look like it's bad. But oh, there was a day where there were people in a bad situation. Oh, somebody know what I'm talking about. They were thrown in a fiery furnace. There was fire everywhere. And the king looked inside and said, I thought that I had three people. But I'm looking and they're jumping around the fire. And I'm looking at them like, how are you jumping in the middle of some fire? Because when God is up in you, you can have fire all around you. But God will do what God will do. So don't worry about when it gets terrible. Say, Father, I'm going to jump like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. I'm going to let you know you are my Father. I don't got to worry about nothing. That's, you got to keep praising. And then you got to do some pushing. Because trust me, church, you're going to need to push and push and push. I tell you, look at your neighbor and just go like that. Just say, honey, just push. Lord, have mercy. Sometimes you got to push your way through some stuff. You got to ask the Holy Ghost, help me to push. Patricia had to push. So she left the baton, didn't she, church? She left the baton and she said, hey, take this baton uh -huh, and run your race. Amen, somebody. In order for you to run your race, some days you're going to have to say, Lord, I got to push. In case you don't know what pushing means. P-U-S-H. <laughs> somebody know where I'm going. Pushing is pray until something happens. Just keep, just keep praying until something happens. Push your way through. Don't worry about how you push. Just, Dialda, keep pushing, honey. Keep, keep pushing. Lawana, keep pushing. Your mama, she kept pushing and pushing and pushing because she knew where her bread came from. She understood she could not let up. Church, I know somebody in here needs to hear that although we're putting somebody in the ground, you can't hold down a good woman like that. You just putting in the ground the body that did his job. Amen, somebody. But one day, they say they shall rise up out of, out of the graves. So until that happens, you got some praising and some pushing. Will it get hard? Oh, yes. Sometimes your praise is going to come out real slow. But who here knows? It don't matter how slow it comes out. Just make sure that it does. And then if you're pushing and you're praying until something happens and you're trying to move through life, don't, don't go by it like, I'm just trying to make it. Look at your neighbor and say, you ain't just trying to make it. The Lord didn't make you to just try to make it. That's not the God you serve. The God you and I serve ain't no, I'm just trying to get through. The God that you serve said, you are the head and not the tail. I'm giving you strength from on high. You don't got to just make it through. I'm walking with my head up high. I ain't just going to make it through. I'm going to overcome. I got victories. Anybody got a victory coming? I dare you to wave your hand. You got a victory coming? I don't know what victory you waving your hand about, but I claim it in the name of Jesus with you. That you don't tell that devil, you want me to be acting like, I, oh, woe is me. I ain't no woe is me. God has got my back. I'm going to work this out. Because he promised you, didn't he? He said, I will never leave you. And I will never forsake you. 
that although you have crosses in your life, oh, I got you. That's why we got to keep on praying, keep on praising, and keep on pushing. Oh, the choir is singing a good one song. Can you sing it with me? He's In the morning, come on now, pray. In the noonday, all oh, your day, you want to just pray. Oh, yes. From the rising of the sun, come on. From the rising of the sun. That's right. All day long to the going down of the, the same. Oh, he's worth. That's right, he's worthy. Jesus is worthy. Let the place fill this place. He's worthy. Yes, Lord, for all you've done. For who you are in my life, I gotta praise you. Oh yes, Lord, pray. Jesus. Yes, Jesus. Just getting practice for the choir you're going to be upstairs praising him with the praise of God we invite you to stand together as we continue knowing that it is God who was all throughout Patricia's life he is here with us today our response as Deacon leads us is Lord hear our prayer For Patricia, who in baptism was given the pledge of eternal life, that she may now be admitted to the company of the saints, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For our sister, who ate the body of Christ, the bread of life, that she may be raised up on the last day, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For our deceased relatives and friends, for all who have helped us, that they may have the reward of their goodness, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For those who have fallen asleep in the hope of rising again, that they may see God face to face, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. For the family and friends of our sister Patricia, that they may be consoled in their grief by the Lord, who wept at the death of his friend Lazarus, we pray to the Lord. The Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us assembled here to worship in faith that we may be gathered together again in God's kingdom, we pray to the Lord. 
The Lord hear our prayers. Oh, Lord, our God, the prayers that we offer right now, we know that you hear them, Lord. Give us the grace to simply receive what you got and know that you will answer us. We ask this in the name of Jesus, the Lord, and may the church say, Amen. may the church say, Amen. you may be seated. As now, we ask those who are going to be a part of bringing up the gifts of, of her life, symbols of her giving, to please go to the back as we now have our celebration of life part two. lighted candle which symbolizes the light of Christ that Patricia received at baptism is brought up by Clarence C.J. Davis Jr., our fantastic, fantastic pianist. The Bible which contains the Christian way of life we are called to live to live by is brought up by Mary Acklin. Let's give a quick to God. Amen. The flowers, which represent the life passed on to the children and grandchildren. This is brought up by Caden Johnson. Somebody preach, Scott. The flowers. The jewelry, which represents Patricia's love for her gems, is brought up by Brooklyn Sky and Shira Davis. Are those beautiful or what? Bling, bling. <laughs> the makeup represents Patricia's love for always looking gorgeous. Right. It's brought up by Megan and Ma Malia Ackley. The picture of Patricia's grandchildren represents the awesome love she shared with them. It's brought up by Dennis Robert Robertson the third. Look at those brothers. One of them could be a priest. Lord, they look that good. Look at the bread and wine, which will become for us the body and blood of Jesus Christ, is brought up by the elder Robertson, Kena Jackson, and Lawana Davis, Patricia's daughters.
together stand as we know it is the yonder that we're going as we say and pray my brothers and sisters that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father may the Lord accept as we humbly present to you these sacrificial offerings O Lord for the salvation of your servant Patricia we beseech your mercy that she who did not doubt your son to be a loving savior may find in him a merciful judge who lives and reigns forever and ever and let the church say Amen. the Lord be with you lift up your hearts let us give thanks to the Lord our God it is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks Lord Holy Father Almighty and eternal God for even though by our own fault we perish yet by your compassion and your grace when seized by death according to our sins we are redeemed through Christ's great victory and with him called back into life and so with the powers of heaven we worship you constantly on earth and before your majesty without end we acclaim we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ at the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion he took bread and giving thanks he broke it and gave it to his disciples saying take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you similar way. When supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many. For the forgiveness of sins, do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection we offer you Lord the bread of life and the chalice of salvation giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit remember Lord your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope and Gregory our Bishop and all the clergy Remember your servant Patricia, whom you have called from this world to yourself, where that she who was united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy, all of those of Patricia's family, all of those of the families connected to her and all who have died. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the Blessed Joseph, her beloved spouse, 
with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages. We may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, O glory and honor is yours forever and ever. upon our feet as we say, sing of the prayer that Jesus taught us to say. Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. And let us all be found in peace. Again, peace of the Lord be with you. Thank you so much, for your love. Praise Jesus. Let us look around. Show somebody your face and let them know, hey, peace be upon you and your life. As we now come to the Lord, the Lamb of God.
let us kneel together. As Patricia did in life here on earth, and surely, as the Bible says, every knee shall bend in the heavens and on the earth. For behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word. At this time, we wanted to invite, of course, all of you, those who are Catholic, that you would come forward to receive Holy Communion. For those of you who are non-Catholic, but you believe in Jesus as Savior of your life, somebody say amen in here, that you, although you would not receive Communion, no, but you would receive a blessing by crossing your shoulders like this. Can you practice with me? Because some people be doing this, and oh, I don't know what but, but we're going to ask that for those of you who are non-Catholic to, to please, we would love to give you a blessing. So in this time, with the direction of our ushers, and there will be stations all over the church, please let us come forward to receive Holy Communion or to receive a blessing.
trouble if you didn't have the Lord God in your life. If, you didn't, if he didn't take you out of situations that you should have been gone. They got to help me out. Let us praise God for Clark Knighton and the music. I can only imagine what it will be like. Yes. When I walk yes. by your side, I can only imagine what my eyes will see when your face is before me. I can only imagine. Only imagine Surrounded by your glory What will my heart feel? Will I dance for you, Jesus? Or in love you? Glory 
by God's glory. Tell me what will my heart feel when I stand in your presence or in all of you. Come on, somebody. Your worship of God. Amen. You got to know that your worship is free. Your worship is because of who he is and what he's done for you. You don't got to worry about who's on your pew not worshiping. You got to worry about your worship to God. You got to say, Father, I just worship you because I know that one day in heaven, that's all I'm going to do is worship you. When you love him, you don't mind giving him worse. Because he surely has blessed your life. I know there's a witness in here. He, he just poured and poured over you. So your worship joins with Patricia right now. Because that's what heaven's going to be about. I, I truly believe they're going to get up there and go, there's your spot in the choir. Get to worshiping what you started. Come on, somebody. You may not know the song, but you know what to do. Just worship God all day long. Did not Patricia do that in her life? I invited Clark, uh, said that he had a song to, to give in the background as we look to the incensing. And there are many who, who seem to be a little perplexed as though the church made up incensing. Somebody raise their hand and know incensing came from the word of God. But the Bible clearly says that the incense filled the temple. What does incense do? It is a powerful reminder that like the incense will rise from this thurible, shouldn't our lives rise up to God and be a sweet incense, a sweet smelling fragrance, so that when God sees what we have done, he'll go, ah, that smells good to my nose because of your sacrifice, of your giving. Is not Patricia's life a reminder of a sweet smelling fragrance? Somebody ought to say amen and hear. And so we now will incense of her body. to God. time I, I want you to know the seminary never prepares you of how to be a pastor and not feel the loss of your parishioner and what do you do when so many things flood your mind and I know it's been a difficult 
past two days as we lost two giants in one day. Uh, we celebrated Harry Beavers yesterday, and so another giant we celebrate today. On behalf of a parish that was touched by Patricia Jackson, if you are a member of this church, I invite you to stand with me in an ovation for a well done job of a good parishioner of St. Joseph the Worker Catholic Church. Amen, 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 amen again. Amen. Patricia, if you're up there, I want you to know we are proud to say St. Joseph was where Patricia Dumas Jackson was a member and served and served and served. And you know what, Miss Pat? I didn't call you love, but... I just want you to know that I'm going to start a foundation called Get It Right in your honor. Amen. Because she got it right. I want to invite our Deacon Charles, who I know is very close to Patricia and her family. Did, he want, did you want to say any words? All I want to say is Patricia was a, a very beautiful person who really had a great impact on my life. And for the five years I was studying for the diaconate, she held me up in prayer. Yes. And all I ever want to say to her is thank you and thank the family. God bless. Amen. Let's praise God. Amen, Deacon Charles. As, as we thank all of you for being here and making sure that this family is not walking alone. Amen. We invite you to stand at this time. As we have our concluding of our prayers to conclude this Holy Mass, before we go our separate ways, let us take leave of our sister. May our farewell express our affection for her. May it ease our sadness and strengthen our hope. One day we shall joyfully greet her again when the love of Christ, which conquers all things, destroys even death itself. Our response to a song of farewell, brothers and sisters, is receive her soul and present her to God the Most High. Receive her soul and present her to God the Most High. May Christ who calls you take you to himself. May angels lead you to the bosom of Abraham. Receive her soul and present her to God the Most High. Eternal rest, grant unto her, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon her. Receive her soul and present her to God the Most High. And to your hands, Father Mercies, we commend our sister Patricia in the sure and certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, she will rise with him on the last day. Merciful Lord, turn toward us and listen to our prayers. Open wide the gates of paradise to your servant and help us to remain to comfort one another with assurances of faith until we all meet in Christ and are with you and with our sister forever. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. I failed to remind or to let you know there will be uh, a repast uh, in the hall to follow the burial. But there are limitations. Somebody say amen in here. Amen. Because we are dealing with a situation of health and safety. Yeah. So there's a limit of 60 people. 60 people can get into the hall. Amen, church. That means after 60, the ushers at the hall, which is across the lot, will close the door, although there will be an opportunity for you to get some food on the side. <laughs> Amen, somebody. A little takeout. So before you write the bishop talking about that priest didn't even let me in the hall and know what his problem is, I'm letting you know up front because beside the family who has their reserved seating, we got to be careful in these days. Amen. So we appreciate your cooperation with us about it. If, if you won't get some, um, some, a plate, then, then amen. God, God bless you. The Lord will be with you. Amen. And so uh, with that being said, uh, we now invite for the funeral directors to come forward as we say our concluding. In peace, let us take our sister to her now her place of rest. May the angels, Patricia, lead you into paradise. 
May the martyrs come to welcome you and take you to the holy city, to new and eternal Jerusalem. Family, I invite you please to stand as now we are about to depart. We're going to ask Paul Bearers to please come forward. If you are Paul Bearer, please come forward so that we may. Come on, let the church. Let the church sing amen. God has spoken. God has spoken. Let the church. for our closing hymn. Oh! 